Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Safest Family on the Block, where knowledge is power. My name is Jason, and joining us today is Mark Bosque. Hello, Mark. How are you? All right, good. How are you? I'm doing really well. Even better to have you on the show. I've been looking forward to getting a dog expert on the show forever, but you guys are busy. We are. So it's, we are. It's a busy yeah. time for us, especially in the protection yeah. field right now. It's a busy yeah. time. Yeah. Absolutely. So let's start with just share a bit about your experience with dogs in a security and self-defense standpoint and also just, you know, the, the snuggly, lovey part of dogs, which is everybody's favorite. Okay. So, um, yeah. What I, grew up awesome? with, grew, I grew up with dogs. Um, start off with a golden retriever. Love that dog. Was an angel. Um, and it's funny you mentioned that is mm -hmm. when I grew up, I had a speech impediment and that dog mm -hmm. would only I could stutter away. That dog wouldn't <laughs> care. He would just accept me for who I am. And it was one of those things where it built my confidence. And I think that's what started my whole thing is how can dogs be so effective by, mm -hmm. by doing just being a, being a dog, you know, they're, they're mm -hmm. not, you know, we're, they're not anything unique in the sense that there's something about a dog that's special. And I think right early on in my age, I gathered that. So I use that when I grew up, when I went to college, I was a sales guy and then I, but I've always been in law enforcement. So after my three year stint with corporate sales, I said, ah, I've always had this passion to go in law enforcement. So I went to the Academy, did that little, did a little FTO. But the thing about police works a little bit different in my senses. I always felt we weren't protecting. We were always kind of mm. after the fact. And mm. I come from a start and I think you do too is I've always wanted to protect myself and protect and protect others. I think it's just been in, in, in ingrained in me. My girlfriend, when I, when I see a fight, I have to step in. I just, it's one of those mm -hmm. things where it's just ingrained in me to mm -hmm. help out. I just don't want to see bullies mm -hmm. beating up innocent people. I just, I've always mm -hmm. hated bullies all my life. And that, that kind of instilled that going back to the dog thing though, is I've always liked having a dog by me. I've always felt more confident with it. And from that, it started my whole using the protection. What can this dog do? We see guide dogs. We see companion dogs. We see this. But I always felt that the, the, the essence of a dog is, you know, when when in prehistoric times they use dogs to protect the, the protect the tribe. I always saw guide dogs as a beneficial thing. I always saw companion dogs and canines for companions that open up stuff for the handicap and mm. or, or um, and so. But to me. I've always felt the dog is that vehicle where you just feel that extra side of protection. There's something about mm. having a dog, maybe a pointy ear dog. I don't know. I mean, maybe a golden retriever is not as effective as a pointy ear dog. I don't know. That's up to the individual. But to me, when I have a dog with me, I don't have that fear of anything. And so mm. I use that into my protection training. I've all, and the thing is, the one thing I tell people, though, is and now we're going to get a little more digress mm -hmm. into the more protection of the field is you have to train obedience. Obedience is the ultimate thing. It's just like I've seen in your background, you're a black belt. If you don't do repetitions, if you don't train hard enough, you're going to forget things. And no matter how good you are at that one point, if you don't keep doing the repetitions, you're going to lose part of that training. So we really stress obedience, obedience, obedience. Mm -hmm. Because it's easier mm. for the dog to, to turn off. The key is to turn them off. And that's the thing. Mm. You want always them to get off of it as quick as you get on it. And I think that's where – I don't want to say we're different than my competitors mm. or different than from other uh, vendors, but mm. we really stress protection. And we do show and tells to businesses also, and they're, they're always so impressed by, God, your dogs mm. are so obedient. And I think that is the key mm. in making the dog – because we don't want to have that – that backyard guard dog quote quote thing that's going on is mm -hmm. where the dog will protect automatically. They, they, they don't. Mm -hmm. And if they do protect, it's not going to be, you're going to get sued because the bite is going to be all over the place in most States in Cal in, in America, in the United States, as long as a dog bites with a firm hold and doesn't let go that, and if someone trespasses, you're not going to get sued. And that's how we really, we really train the mm -hmm. dog to bite, firmly and then hold as long as as long as you can to release it once mm -hmm. you feel you're safe yeah. it seems very much like you know often it's a glib response but i also mean it when most people come to me and say hey i'm feeling a little nervous these days should i buy a gun and right. the answer is well if you're not willing to put in the training if you're not willing to put in the range time if you're not willing to take professional classes do not buy a gun and I the agree. glib responses and the, the, the glib responses don't buy a gun buddy buy a dog 
But right. with the dog, for the dog to be effective as a protector, I mean, I think they all they provide a level of deterrent that you know right. a gun in your safe does not. But right. for them to be an effective protector, you need to do you need to go to the lessons. You need to train yourself and train your dog to use them effectively in that way. Agreed. And again, is that's all about doing the reps. Now, again, is yeah. like you said, with a gun, once mm-hmm. you commit, you're there is no, I mean, the target is neutralized, you know, I mean that you are trained to neutralize the target. I don't care if it's civilian training, police training. Once you, once you unload, you're not mm. just going, Hey, I'm just going to hurt him. I'm, I'm going to be in TV scenario. I'm going to shoot him in the knee kneecaps. That's not mm. how real training is. So yeah. with the dog, it helps because you're probably not going to do lethal on it. Now, mm-hmm. if the aggressor keeps going, then the dog will bite in different mm-hmm. places. But as long as the dog is preventing it, and again, as you put the one thing, mm-hmm. is most times when you see a dog, pointy ears, it is a prevention measure. It is a, mm-hmm. and I tell this in most of my classes, it's a psychological and physical mm-hmm. deterrent. And I think it goes into the human aspect of, in our DNA, no one wants to get bit by an animal. We just think that is just bizarre. Like our whole system is like, whoa, our survival mechanism is getting bit by an animal. This is this is bizarre. So I think that plays into the whole why the dog is so effective because it is psychological and is a physical deterrent. Mm-hmm. And even with the smaller dogs, like even a even a Chihuahua or a little poodle, yeah. you know, criminals don't like attention. They don't like chaos. They like right. a something they can rely on, something that they know is not going to escalate into something. And those right. little dogs are noise and chaos and confusion. Exactly. Exactly. And you make a great point is there was a study that I think 80% of, I mean, mm-hmm. burglar, the burglars, like hundred burglars or a thousand burglars that they interviewed at one mm-hmm. time. And if you just had a dog, just a dog, not a protection sure. dog, just a dog, 60% or eight, 60, 80%, the, the burglar wouldn't even come near the place. Just because of what you're just because of what you're talking about. Now let's just imagine if you had a protection dog with you, that would change the whole mm-hmm. scenario. So that is and that is where I think the dog is so effective is if you're going to a bank and mm-hmm. you know, if the dog's there, he'll flip around and you can take your money out, mm-hmm. go to your car, you won't get mm-hmm. carjacked because the dogs are trained that way too. I mean, we're using the dog as kind of like your your buddy who's got your back. You know, it's kind of like yeah. you, you know, and that's how we try to make the dog come across and really make it work because Mm -hmm. you have to be with that. The more you bond with the dog, the better the dog is. Yeah. Or or the better the performance is, I should say. Yeah. And also with that, that idea of that dog being your buddy, that's got your back. You know, we also know from multiple studies, there was that, I always forget, but those two people who had the criminals watch the video of people and choose who to victimize Right. And they figured out exactly how people walk in ways that encourage people to victimize them. Right. Walking with confidence. You're just walking with confidence is a way not to be attacked. And if you're walking with your, with your good buddy dog, yes. you know, most people, I mean, you had your experience as a child that that, that dog was key to your confidence. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And there was, exactly. and back in the nineties, there was that change in the law where they started allowing assist dogs to come with children when they were, uh, testifying in court against abusers, right? And exactly. and and you know it's yeah. very hard to be scared of that guy mad dogging you when you got a big old German Shepherd right there <laughs> cuddling up against you. Exactly. I mean, exactly. And you make yeah. uh, I, I'm I'm digressing a little bit, but there was mm-hmm. there was a company out of Spain. And it's really interesting to me mm-hmm. is they are for um, mm-hmm. they train dogs for people who were abused in domestic relationships and. Mm. And it was really interesting. These um, uh, the the ex spouse, the the female, mm-hmm. would have this dog, and you should see the evolution of her confidence. Once she had the dog yeah. with her, they just got more confident because, in usually mm-hmm. in domestic relationship, domestic abuse relationships, the the confidence is so low they feel yeah. like they are they are hopeless. That the dog brings back hope, brings back protection, brings back confidence. Mm-hmm. So I thought it was yeah. a really unique, uh, unique training going on there. Yeah, I think, and I, I think that's one of the reasons that so many self defense instructors, personal protection instructors, do recommend a dog, especially if you're somebody who's been victimized in the past, if you're a woman who lives alone, if right. you're somebody who people target. 
Yeah. And that, that brings up the next question. You know, if you, folks are thinking of thinking about having a dog or mm-hmm. want a dog. There's, you know, they're in one of three situations. Either they want a dog and don't have a dog. They've got a dog who's pretty well trained. Or they've got a dog who's, you know, they're a great buddy around the house. They fetch the newspaper and whatnot. <laughs> but you're, they're not confident that they're going to be a deterrent against a committed attacker. Right. So in those kinds of situations, what if I had if I was in any of those situations, where should I start with getting the kind of training and information that I need to have a dog be not just a good companion, but an excellent protector? Um, well, first of all, you, now yeah, now you're asking questions is, is can does a dog have what it takes? You know, does it is like I can't play in the NBA or yeah. NFL. I'm a decent mm-hmm. sized person, but I don't have the right skills and the traits mm-hmm. to go to that level. I might be good at maybe a high school level or college level, but I don't have that mm-hmm. extra. So now you bring up scenarios where you said mm-hmm. this dog is very obedient, but if it's a golden retriever, it's not going to, I would have to say 90%, 95%. Sure. It doesn't have that, that defense mechanism it needs. Mm-hmm. So that's why we tend to go with a German shepherd or a Belgian or these, because they have, they have that trait, a defensive trait. And you, and all we're doing when we do protection work is we accentuate that defensive trait. So it comes out naturally, it comes out on point. The thing is a lot of dogs, even I've seen Roddy's and different ones, Roddy's are good, but, but they're, you got to, they're only probably, I'd say five or six breeds that really are made to do people protection work. Now there are mm-hmm. livestock guardians. We can get into all that stuff, but just to do people protection, I only recommend mm-hmm. five or six breeds that I've seen be- pretty successful. Now, if you have that breed, we would mm-hmm. take it, see where it's at and maybe, it, and maybe it hasn't and maybe, and mm-hmm. maybe it doesn't. So that's where a lot of the times you have to watch out for, oh, yeah, my dog's a German Shepherd. <laughs> I've seen German Shepherds that are guide dogs. They don't have that, you know, they don't have that, that defensive trait. But they're good for guide dogs, but they're not good for protection mm-hmm. work or, and vice versa. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's kind of a, you need to have that, what it's born with, and then how mm-hmm. we train it. So I hope that answers your question. I don't know if I did. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's a great place to start with understanding, I think, having goals and expectations that are in line with the reality so that if you're looking it up, you know, if you're in a situation where you want a protection dog Mm -hmm. and you haven't got a dog yet that you're already attached to, then there's certain breeds that are going to do the job better. Correct. And then if you're, if you have a family, you've got yourself an Australian shepherd, who's a big old, big old lump of slobber in love. (laughs) That's uh, you know, that's great. And maybe there's some training that can increase that dog's, um, deterrence factor and maybe some other safety factors one of the great things about australian shepherds is they keep shepherding yeah <laughs> they'll run and they'll check in with every single kid on the playground and exactly. they'll come back to you exactly which for very very many of our most important safety factors is plenty right but oh, absolutely. having and having those expectations and then getting whatever training you need to maybe hone in on those traits right exactly so exactly. Yeah, starting with starting with expectations that match what you need and if you've already got a pup, what you have. Right. Now you can have yeah. like a, like a Australian mm-hmm. or a livestock guardian dog that does your perimeter of the house. Mm-hmm. That's different. Yeah. But you really can't mm-hmm. bring a livestock guardian into your, into walking down, a st- walking in, in a store or mm-hmm. walking in the street. Mm-hmm. They're not going to have, they're going to be too defensive on that. Yeah. They're, they're not social enough. So you need to have kind of that social mm-hmm. high, that social yeah. skill and that defensive skill mm-hmm. all in all in line. And going back to what, and I, I mean, mm-hmm. this is how I say it, and I've said this in many of my presentations to businesses, and mm-hmm. I think you appreciate this, is a protection dog is like is like a person having a black belt. They know they have it, but they're not going to show it unless yeah. it, it is necessary. And I think that yeah. is the key to this whole thing is, mm-hmm. you know, I don't want my dog to be all ag- aggravated and ready to go off. Mm-hmm. That's not what I want. Now, in a SWAT tactical dog, mm-hmm. We're looking for that more, more than, yeah. hey, because they're going to come out of the car and they're going to get mm-hmm. the perp or yeah. the perpetrator. That's what you're looking for. But in in, in protection dogs or mm-hmm. in security dogs, you want a dog to be only to go to that level when it is needed. Not that yeah. they even want to go there, but we but but we are asking it and it has the trait to, to do the job. Yeah. And then I think you also have to examine you know the realities of the situation of a parent, right? Where yeah. – 
you know, there's 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 a couple of guys out there. I won't name names. I have immense respect for them. Who are, they're Navy SEALs or SWAT guys who are doing family safety stuff. But some of their advice comes from a context that's very different from soccer games in the suburbs. <laughs> yeah. And you know, and so and if I'm you know if I've got a family of three and right. I'm and I'm seriously concerned the need for a SWAT tactical dog or a defensive yeah. perimeter guardian dog. I may need to re-examine some decisions I made previously. <laughs> exactly. Right. Exactly. I mean, you said it right there. Yeah. You know. So I mean, yeah. and I think you have to take everything mm-hmm. in context. You know, every yeah. every every mm-hmm. environment is different. Every mm-hmm. situation is a little bit different. Yes, there are certain traits that will be good all over, but there are certain traits you you, you don't want to see that. So yeah. Yeah. And that and finding that sweet spot between the capacity for aggression or even just the appearance of capacity for aggression. What? Exactly. Uh, when my when my youngest was about a year old, we got a uh, husky Rottweiler cross. Beautiful animal. Looked like a German yeah. Shepherd, weirdly. Nice. Um, but just and I mean, intimidating. Yeah. But dumb as a stump. <laughs> <laughs> you know? A great cuddle. Right. He was, yeah. he was my baby's favorite pillow. <laughs> but dumb as a stump and wouldn't, you know, and if there was ever a situation, he'd, he'd she'd hightail it. Oh, right. Okay. Right. You yeah. Know. yeah. Right. And again, it's, yeah. that's because maybe mm-hmm. it was a little nervous or didn't have enough defense. Yeah. And it just feels yeah. like, hey, you know, I don't have it. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't yeah. have it. They don't have it. So mm-hmm. we need to see that. That's why mm-hmm. I try to, we need to, like, when we breed or when we uh, mm-hmm. import over, we, we look at that because the, uh, we mm-hmm. have to look at it. Do they have what's in that DNA? And then can we accentuate it? Yeah, absolutely. And so, so my next big question is, I've, you know, I'm not very familiar with the dog training and protection dog industry. You know, I've had some peripheral contact over the years. Mm-hmm. I've seen many other aspects of the self-defense and self-protection industry and the number of just outright charlatans operating the field is overwhelming. And I, I suspect the same is true in your... Yes, yeah. So if I'm, you know, if we're where you guys are now, where do you guys operate? We're in California. We're about thirty what? miles south of San Francisco. Okay. So if you're thirty miles south of San Francisco and need a dog trainer, you have found him. But if we're, you know, up in Seattle or Portland yeah. or New York or over here in Crete, um, what are some red flags that I should look for when I'm interviewing dog trainers that can tell me that you know this guy is not the guy I need working with my dog and my family? Um, is it for protection work or just straight obedience work? Um, let's, 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 uh, let's look at both. Let's start with protection work because okay. that, that's your area of most expertise. So, okay. yeah. Well, well, with protection work, you want to ask is how many years have they been in the business? Of course, what type of training do they use? Do they use balance mm-hmm. training, reward training, whatever? I've come from the belief it's balance training. You reward good behavior, mm-hmm. you correct negative behavior. Now I'm not saying be harsh, just you have to correct negative mm-hmm. behavior because it's a good on off switch. Um, I see some people on YouTube and she said the charlatans of the world is they do this stuff. And I'm like, mm-hmm. if the dog is running after a deer, I don't know if a treat in your hand is going to really bring that, bring that <laughs> dog back. You know what I mean? So there's stuff like that mm-hmm. where you just got to question is try mm-hmm. to be common sense with it and ask. And again, is, is like in protection work. If I see them selling a dog for 75,000, I'm like, that seems awfully high to me because Mm-hmm. And I'm going to give this analogy is it's just kind of like in horses. They go, well, it has Schultz and train for mm-hmm. IPA, all these titles. Mm-hmm. That's what the parent has. They never say what the puppy has. They just say what the parent mm-hmm. has. So they're kind of, they're betting on that the, 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 the litter is going to be as successful as the parent. And I'm sorry, mm-hmm. is my brother's a doctor. I don't have, the, I don't have those same skills <laughs> as he does. So why would I, as, mm-hmm. as going back to the breed, why would I even fathom to think this litter is going to have the same skills? It may, it may not. So when they overpromise papers and all this stuff, that is a red flag to me. And, and anything, I mean, I, you know, there are some things out there. They say they sold a dog for $230,000. I can't believe mm-hmm. why anyone would have that, would sell a dog. For, I didn't get, but anyways, if you see <laughs> the price point above mm-hmm. K and, even that, I think it's pretty high, but I've seen some dogs that are really good at that. Um, that's a big red flag to me because you're getting just a lot of just mar- uh, marketing marketing BS to me. And, um, and it sounds like if they're going to be exaggerating the quality of the dog just to wrap up the price tag, they're probably willing to exaggerate their own uh, their own 
oh, what's the word, qualifications yes. and their own accomplishments yes. as well. Right. And But just make sure there's at least, in a protection work, is that they have at least 10 years background in the field because that gives you kind of a good litmus. It kind of gives you a good mm-hmm. test of mm-hmm. how much – because I, I saw a 25-year-old. I'm like, how many years did that, does this guy really have? What, he was fit. Now, he could. Mm-hmm. He could have been a kid mm-hmm. and maybe he did it. I mean, I'm not saying it's good. I'm not discounting mm-hmm. it. But just make sure you do a little thorough of a background yeah. check on – what their bio is giving out. Um, also, I would on like a protection work. I would make sure you see when they bite. It's a firm like when they give a show and tell mm-hmm. to you, trying trying to impress you. If you're yeah. uh, make sure that bite is nice and firm mm-hmm. and not and not and not shark biting. You know, not all over yeah. the place. That mm-hmm. is good. Protection trainers will make sure that dog has a solid yeah. bite, firm mm-hmm. on the leg or the arm or wherever mm-hmm. wherever the target is. Is, and th- you want to see that. So, and then obedience training is, mm-hmm. I've seen a lot of different, different areas and you have to feel comfortable. Like if you're an obedience trainer, maybe you just want to see all reward training and that's fine. And that's mm-hmm. what you believe in. But I make sure you have to be in line with what the client wants and what you, and what, and what the outcome, if you want the dog to be on point 99% of the time, I guarantee all reward training is not going to have that. You're not going to have that. Mm-hmm. Now, on the other side of it is if, if it's all compliant training, that dog, you're going to wash the dog out also. So right. it's kind of like a good coach. Mm-hmm. Reward, hey, great job. You did a good job. Hey, mm-hmm. you, you need to work on this part of it. Yeah. You know. So that's where I see a mm-hmm. lot of times common sense is thrown out the window. And I'm sure you see it in your field. Yeah. Is where common mm-hmm. sense is just thrown out. Like, no, let's kind of just ask. Mm-hmm. What do you want and how to achieve that? That makes sense. And real quick, wanted to circle back a little bit for any of yeah. our viewers who are not yet, who aren't very familiar with attack dogs and all of that. Mm-hmm. The idea about a dog biting once, that's because if the dog bites somebody a bunch of times, that's doing a lot more bodily harm. Where if what where the goal is they latch on once and they do a minimum amount of damage, but at the same time, this attacker has a 110-pound animal latched onto them by an open wound. Which is right. a really good way to take the fight out of somebody. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Right. And with having a firm yeah. bite, they can pull it mm-hmm. down too. So, yeah. and the perpetrator is going to be much more in compliant mm-hmm. than not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because and they, we're talking again about minimal minimum force necessary to keep everybody safe, which is right. The goal. Because I mean, you always worry about lawsuits mm-hmm. too. As long as yeah. and in most states mm-hmm. in, in the United States, is that if the law, the dog has a solid bite and knows it's trained, it's not biting everywhere. The yeah. loss, there will there will be no loss. So yeah, it, it's just like if you're in a self defense situation and you know somebody tries to mug me and I I knock him down and run away. I'm not going to get sued. If I knock him down and maybe he's big and I I break his ankle so he can't chase me, probably not going to get sued. But if I right. knock him down and then kick him three times in the head for trying, right? I'm I'm looking at a lawsuit if not some jail time. Right, and you punch him in the nose a couple times too. Like that, you know yeah. what I mean? So it's right. like, I mean, exactly, exactly. exactly. Yeah, excellent. So I want to thank you so much for coming on today to the show, sharing your expertise. Uh, before I let you go, though, what's the really smart question about your field that I should have asked you, but I haven't? Uh, that's a great question. Um, <laughs> I think where the biggest hurdle is, and I know it's not a normal mm-hmm. question is, is yeah. when you say attack dog or this is, I like to say protection mm-hmm. dog because mm-hmm. like, going back to my black belt scenarios, you're there for the safety. Of, mm-hmm. of you, safety of your family, it's safety. I when it, attack to me is like an aggressor. I, I never mm-hmm. want to be known as the aggressor. I want to have yeah. a good defense is a better offense to me. And all you're trying to say is, hey, give me, give me time and space. Because the one thing you know in security, if you can give anything time and space, usually most issues go away. Yeah, and that dog can provide exactly that thing. And right. I, I think you I think you hit the nail on the head because you know there's there's black belts who are out there who all they want to do is be safe. They often never mention their qualification of their crowd. They certainly don't do it in a bar. Right. And then there's those guys who are like they they went they had their black belt like a chip on their shoulder and they're out there. Right. And I, I, and and we know dog owners like that too. They've got their they've got their two Rottweilers with their <laughs> chains around their necks and they're all 
<laughs> and it's and it's it's serving their ego the same way that that often that younger, more newly minted black belt in their twenties who probably bounces right. on the weekend, which I was guilty of being in my twenties when I was young and dumb. Sure. Um, it is that same guy, right? But exactly, and as, that's where yeah. I want to differ. It's that mm-hmm. I want you to know that hey, this dog doesn't know those skills. But yeah. if you, but if you're going to mm-hmm. choose, if you, if you want to go south, you know, yeah. now you may have another thing coming to you. So. Exactly. A, a dear friend of mine had it. It was a golden retriever. And yep. she was, you know, just a perfect playmate would get bopped on the nose, poked in the eye by the child and never. And yep. then one time a larger child apparently tried to take a toy of hers and the dog just without teeth. Yep. Put his hand over the child's child's uh, arm and until the child let go and went away. And that's, <laughs> that's what you're looking for. That that's kind of, exactly. Yeah. That's what you're really looking exactly. for. And mm-hmm. and honestly, mm-hmm. most of the times I don't even want to go to the bite. I mean, a good like yeah. you said, but a good trained bark, meaning I can yeah. tell the dog to bark, mm-hmm. is going to prevent a good eighty percent of eighty to ninety percent of of all the issues. Because yeah. when you see a dog mm-hmm. barking, a trained bark, meaning a, a you, mm-hmm. you, you know, that's why we stress obedience. Because mm-hmm. when when perpetrators are looking at stuff, they're like, if they mm-hmm. see a trained animal, it's a whole different mm-hmm. world there because they're like going. Ooh, what can you, what's the dog mm-hmm. going to do? What's the dog not going to do? Mm-hmm. And I think that's why I really like seeing mm-hmm. when you can tell the dog to bark aggressively and then turn it off and turn it back on. It's mm-hmm. pretty much game over. For, I mean, the, yeah. the, the, the issue will then go away. It's, it's, it's the, the three Billy goats gruff story in terms of self-defense, right? You know? right. They're, they're not going to mess with, you know, you're the you're the papa goat at this point, and you yeah. know, because criminals are going to go find the easiest, safest person to victimize. Right. And yeah. and whether you've got a retired military dog who got yeah. retrained and adopted into your home, right. or whether you've got your your favorite beagle who's getting a little on in years, if yeah. they're if they're obedient, if they're trained, if they can deliver that bark, that bark, mm-hmm. most criminals are going to go look for the person who's walking by themselves. Right. Because in most situations, yeah. you know, this is the, I mean, yeah. we're all predators to one, to one degree. Yeah. You're going to go to the mm-hmm. weakest link. And if, the, yeah. if you have any defensive measure that you see, you're going to go, uh-uh, I'm going somewhere else. So, yeah, just so. So Mark, yeah. where can folks contact you to find out more about what you do and what you know? Hey, uh, you can email me at Mark at K nine X factor.com or you can go on my LinkedIn at Mark mm-hmm. Bosquet. Um, and or can I next factor on my LinkedIn mm-hmm. site? And that's the best way to hold of me. And if you want to call, I don't know my local number. I don't have one eight hundred number. Six five zero two four five one six four four. But I would probably say the best bet is Mark at K nine X Factor dot com. Excellent. We'll make sure that's in the show notes. And folks, if you have any questions about dog training, uh, whether you're in the local area for him or not, please do reach out. Mark's been very, very, very responsive to my emails. And surely knows his stuff. So thank you, Mark, so much for coming on today. Hey, and we do go nationwide. Yeah. We do sell nationwide. So it's not like. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Great. But Good. thank you very so, much for yeah. the time. Yeah. And Thanks, thank you Jason. so much. And thank you, everybody, for watching. Stay safe, everybody. We'll see you next time.